Hi, this is Randy. Welcome to my channel. Hope all is well with you today. God's been good to me. If you would uh, please hit that button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, the red subscribe button. That'll help me push this out to other people. If you give it a thumbs up, if you want to share it with someone, if you want to make a comment, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. If you'd like to see all my posts, just hit the little bell. Every time I post one, it'll let you know. But I could really use the help in subscribing and uh, giving it a thumbs up. That helps me get this pushed out to other people. Today we're going to talk about the pulpit should not be used as a whipping post. The pulpit should not be used as a whipping post. It ought to be used in a right way. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God did not give us a spirit of tim timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. These three characteristics of a effective Christian leader has to be used of power, love, and self-discipline. We as leaders should not be uh, intimidated or be timid to face problems that happen, but in order to do it, you have to do it through the love of the Lord and do it in a right way. Power is given to us from God to help lead the church. Leaders are supposed to help lead. And our job within the church is to lead. Power being used the wrong way is real bad for a church. We must remember we cannot use our position to show our power and abuse it and cause division in a church. The church which God has put in place, we need to realize that we can't use the church that way. Let's talk about love. We must love people in order to lead people. In love, and not your, your heart will not use your mouth to harm people. All right, If you're loving people right and your heart is right, you're going to act right, you're going to do right, and you're not going to be mean to church members and fellow brothers and sisters. Uh, let's talk about uh, a, a visit I had to a church one time. I went to a church to visit. I don't even remember why I went. It was a uh, a service when we wasn't having church. I wasn't preaching anywhere. So I just dropped in on this church that I, I know the pastor. We weren't cl close friends. Never been out to eat with him, but I knew him. He knew me. He visited my mom and dad's church several times over the years. So I dropped by his church. And uh, the pastor uh, got up in the pulpit. And he was really hot under the collar, and he started blasting people from the pulpit. He even called some people by name. And it was getting real uncomfortable real fast. I'm estimating there was about 150 people there. There might have been 200, but I think I was around 150. And their platform was like four feet at least four feet, it might have been five, but it was every bit of four feet up off the floor. So he was right there, and I was sitting about halfway back. And they had it, they sang two or three songs. And then he, uh, I don't know if he stopped them, I don't remember, or if they got done, but they usually sang more than two or three songs. And then he told everybody to go down off the platform, and he got up there, and I thought, boy, that, they didn't even receive an offering, they didn't make any announcement, they didn't do anything. I thought, well, maybe he's really wanting to preach something. Boy, he got up in the pulpit and he started in, and he started ripping people. I mean, and he told, and he told everybody, if you don't like the way things are run around here, leave, go somewhere else. And then he told them how much that he was mad and that he was upset with people, and I don't even remember what it was about, but it was very uncomfortable. Uh, maybe I was the only visitor there that night. I don't know because I don't know his knew his people at that time. But it got really nasty real quick. And two or three times I thought about getting up. Now, if I'd have been sitting in the last two or three rows, I would have slipped out. But I was halfway down and on a corner aisle in the middle of the aisle that goes right up to the platform. And if I stepped up and walked out, everybody would see it. Not that everybody there knew me. I'd never preached in that church, but a lot of the people there did. They'd been to uh, uh, different meetings that I had preached. And so I sat there, and it just was horrible. And I felt so sorry for all those people. 
And he just, his veins stuck out in his neck. His face got real red. He kept hitting the pulpit with his fist. And it was, it was horrible. All right. That shouldn't go on in the church. You know, people are not a, that's not your whipping post. I realize the Bible says that if you have someone in the church has fought against another person, they're supposed to go with him with a witness and try to resolve it. If they can't resolve it, then they go back with a couple of witnesses. If it doesn't, then they go to the church. And then sometimes the church has to take care of things publicly if somebody's doing some real bad things. But that's a rarity, and it has to be handled that way. But a pastor shouldn't get up in the pulpit and whip people and then calling names out. I mean, if you're putting somebody out of the church because they did something drastically terrible in the church and you're doing it the right way with the Bible, then you deal with that one person and get it over with and move on. But I mean, all over the place, hitting different people and everything else. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The Lord loves the church, and the Lord wants peace in the church. And sure, correction has to come, but it has to come in the right spirit, the right way. I was at another church, and the pastor, evidently they were having money problems, uh, or people weren't happy the way the money was being spent. I don't know. He did practically the same thing, except he let praise and worship get done. And when he got up there, I saw he didn't pick up his Bible. was sitting on his chair, so I thought he had another one up there on the pulpit or whatever. This was several years ago before people had tablets and all this. And he got up there and he started telling people, you know, I don't, you know, basically he told them, I don't open the books to everybody. I don't tell you how much we have in the account, you know, and and how I spend the money, I do it right. And 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 if anybody doesn't like it, you know, and, and then he proceeded to tell them that the way the church was set up, you can't fire me. I'm not, I can't, you, if you don't like what I'm doing, you need to get out of here and go somewhere else. And I mean, he just went on and on. And he even got red in the face. He was hitting the pulpit. And it, I was so embarrassed, I finally got up and left. I just got up and walked out because it was so bad. You know, you can't use the pulpit as a whipping post to make people, you know, listen to what you have to say. It's sort of like uh, if you buy a 60 or a $100 ticket to go to a concert to listen to someone sing, and then they get up and start talking politics and start ripping different politicians and letting them have it and doing this and saying some pretty curse words from there. You, you don't pay to listen to that. You, you're not paying. It's not a rally. It's He's supposed to entertain you and sing his songs and all that, you know. And I had one of them where that happened, and I got up and walked off. I just walked away you know, and left. And I wasn't the only one. There was a lot of people started leaving. And when he seen a lot of people leaving, then he kind of cooled it down and uh, said, well, you know, I probably shouldn't have said this, but I did. So we'll just sing a song. He could see everybody was leaving. You know, people aren't going to sit there and be abused by nobody, especially when they pay money. Now, if they go to that church, they're paying money, all right? So they're not going to sit there and do that. You can't do that to people. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31, whether then you eat or whatsoever you do, do it to the glory of God. When you get up and slam people, is that the glory to God? Is that bringing glory, all right? Now, when I was a manager... Uh, before I became a manager, when I was a salesman, we had a sales manager that would, we had a meeting three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, first thing in the morning. It'd go on for an hour, hour and a half. He would talk to us like we were dogs. He couldn't say a sentence without saying a cuss word. And he just browbeat everybody, all right? That Saturday, we had one salesman who kept leaving keys on his desk after people drove cars instead of putting them back and putting them on the board. Well, somebody out there want to drive a car and a salesman go to get it, no keys. The people were standing there waiting to take a test drive. And, running, and he kept doing it over and over and over. And so he's beating everybody up in the meeting when he should have just took that one salesman in his office and dealt with him. Well, when they fired him 16 months later when I went to work there, 
They made me the head manager. And I never did. I said, I went in and told my salesman, we're going to have one meeting a week, Monday morning, 15 minutes. That's it. If you got something to say, you want to tell people, and if I have a problem with any of you guys, any, and I, had a, I hired a woman. Uh, to, they never had a woman sell before. I hired a woman to sell. Uh, she was good. She was qualified. Uh, she never sold cars, but she sold real estate. I hired her. So when I say, fellas, I'm talking about her too. Uh, I said, if I have a problem with any of you, I'll take you in my office, we'll close the door, and we'll sit down and talk about it, but I'm not going to beat up 12, 12 people when there's only one person in the room that did something silly. I'll take you in. I'm not gonna, we're not going to have a whipping post in here, and we're not going to be mean. And we're going to have one meeting a week, 15 minutes, and we're done. You guys need to do your jobs and enjoy life, and I don't need to stand here and beat you over the head. And if somebody forgot to close the refrigerator back there Saturday with, and left our food in there and they're walking around, I'll deal with him or her. I, I'm not going to call everybody into a meeting and beat everybody up. Only one person did it. You see my point. You know, a lot of the stuff that, that I've seen people do from the pulpit would have been better if they had took the person they were mad at with a couple of the elders and go into an office after church and deal with them. I found out one thing in management school at Chrysler that I used in the church as a pastor when I learned it. Never ever correct people before the service or during the service unless they're up disturbing. We understand that if they get up and start talking and they're not supposed to, you have to tell them, hey, you can't do that, whatever. But I meant you don't if you got unhappy with someone, you do it after church. So when they walk out the door of the office, they're going home. They're not going back in the church to upset everybody. And then they've got all night and all the next day until you have your next service to get over their mad place. You do it at the, in the evening <laughs> after the service is over. Don't do it before church. Then you're upset. They're upset. That spirit goes into your church. Then everybody senses it in their spirit that something isn't right. I've seen this happen. They'll start crying or they'll start telling. They're mad. They're either mad or hurt. If they're hurt, they're crying. People want to know why they're crying. They tell them. All right? If they're mad, they're going to go tell everybody and they're going to let it see, be shown on their face. And then it tears the whole service up. So if you've got a problem, you need to take care of it after church, not before church. Because... That can't be allowed to happen. It's not a whipping post. 1 Corinthians 10 and 31. Whether then you eat or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Do it to the glory of God. Colossians 3 and 17. Whoever, whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. We have to do everything in order. God is not the author of confusion. He doesn't cause confusion. So if you've got confusion going on in your service, and you're up there and you're mad, you know, my dad taught me something valuable when I was growing up. Son, never correct your children when you're mad. All right, if you have to let them get away with something for a few minutes or an hour, and they didn't do something, it's better to do that. Never correct them when you're mad because you'll be sorry and you'll, you'll say things or do things that you wished you wouldn't have done. Do not correct when you're mad. And he said, in life, if you ever become a boss or a manager or if you ever become a pastor, don't be mean to people. Don't whip them in front of other people. Do things right. God has an, a, a way of doing things in order. He's not the author of confusion. No pastor should use their pulpit as a whipping post to get even with people or get at people they're mad about, especially if you got 150 people sitting there and it's three or four people, maybe two people, it might be five, but it's not 150. And once you do that, the service is done. It's done. When you go on for 20 minutes screaming and hollering at people and beating the pulpit with your fists and your veins are sticking out in your neck, and you're telling people, you can't fire me, I'm here, you'll never get rid of me, you'll go before me and all that. 
that does no one any good. And when you get done, there's no way you can salvage the, the service. You can sing all the songs you want. You can try to grab your Bible and try to preach a sermon, but everybody's tuning you out. It's it, You've created a bad spirit, and you've opened the Pandora box, and there's no way of putting it back in. So you might as well just ask everyone to stand when you're done spewing off and pray and say, you know, you're dismissed because there's no way. You can't, you can't do that. If you have a problem with someone, take them to the side. Talk to them privately and take in witnesses. That's what you have church elders for. Now, I don't know how your church is up. Some have a board. Some have elders. You know, some have this or that, whatever it may be. But if you got a problem with somebody, take take it out with them. Don't take it on everybody in the church. Don't create a bad thing. Don't use your pulpit as a whooping post. Now, I'll tell you one last one. I had a guy that I knew, and we were young, we were single, we were 22, 23, 24 years old in that range here. And he visited our he come to our church during the week because we were on Thursday night and his church was on Wednesday. And me and him were friends. We liked to play music. Anyway. Uh, he eventually came to our church full time, but I w he asked me to come visit him at his church, and I went to his church, and they had one of those services like that where the pastor just went wild. I mean, he was just screaming and hollering. My buddy was getting more embarrassed and more embarrassed and more embarrassed. I put my arm around him, patted him. I leaned over. I said, hey, don't worry about it. He goes, I brought you here. I had no idea. And then when he said that, that, he hollers down to us. You guys got something to say? You're talking when I'm talking. I was like, oh. I looked up there at him. I said, nah. I was just telling him. I, he, he feels bad because he invited me to come. And what's going on right now? He's embarrassed. That's exactly what I told him. And that pastor paused for like 15 seconds. Didn't say anything. Like he was caught off guard like we were just going to sit there and let him beat us up. We wasn't talking about him. We wasn't, I didn't even know what was going on. But see, this, this is what the kind of spirit, you can't let that get in your church. A pastor and leaders, elders, whoever's the leader in the church, you have to learn to control your emotions and not show them from the pulpit. Now, I'm not talking about, if you're talking about a baby that got, a small kid that got hit by a car and they're in bad shape and you're praying, you may cry. Your heart may be broken. That's fine. There's no problem. You may uh, worship God and say, oh, praise God, and, and get excited while praise and worship God. That's okay. I'm talking about rebuke and, and reprove and correction from the pulpit. Stuff like that from the pulpit has to be done in the right spirit at the right time. And if you have a problem... All right, and I had a problem in my church one time, and I, I I was pastor, and I went on and had the entire service, but I cut my sermon short. I didn't preach my normal amount of time. I preached a short sermon, and I offered prayer to anyone that needed it, and then I told them, "I y'all sit down. I need to tell you something before we go." And so they all sat down, and I said, uh, "The service is over." Now I want to tell you, I want to tell you in my heart, we've got a problem with someone in the church and, they, and they've and they made, anyway, this person in the church had called almost everybody in the church, had everybody stirred up. So since they were all stirred up, they all knew what was going on, I decided to address it. But I came down off the platform and talked to them like I'm talking to you and I asked them, does anyone here have anything to say? And we talked together. We shared together, and I said, let's all come down front. Let's pray together before we go. I handled it, and we never had a problem after that. And the person that kept causing trouble, when I did that, they never came back. It was over. But you don't have to treat people and whip them from the pulpit because that's not good. If you have that going on at your church, I would suggest if it gets out of hand, and you're feeling embarrassed, especially if you got your children there, I would recommend just getting up and going home. Go out to eat, wherever you plan on doing after church, just leave. You know, don't don't stand there and be beat up when you've done nothing wrong and and, and have people be mean to you. We shouldn't do that as leaders in the church. All right. 
So that's my little soapbox thing I wanted to give you. It just came to my mind the other night. I couldn't get it out. I just kept remembering it. And I read my Bible and I heard it. I thought, well, there's got to be somebody out there that may need this. I hope this hasn't happened at your church. Hope it never does. But if it does, or if it did, I want you to know it isn't right to whip people from the pulpit, especially if you're mad at them. And that one pastor was mad because my friend was dating his daughter, and he didn't want her to date him. So instead of him talking to the boy by himself, he gets up publicly and goes on. That's the pastor I said something to because he said something to me. So you you got a problem with somebody. Take that one person away. Don't use the whole church. It makes you look bad. And it makes the church look bad. You don't edify anybody doing that. So remember, subscribe, bottom right hand button, hit it, ask a friend, share it. If you uh, would uh, make a comment, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Give me a thumbs up. Help me get the my gospel pushed, God's gospel pushed out to help other people. Thank you for your time this time. Till next time, old Rev May signing off. You have a wonderful day.